Hello, everybody. Let's see, let's see. Gotta do some preferences things real quick so I don't get too many alerts on hex chat. All right. Now what? Um, now I have to do a quick test of something. Okay, I'm supposed to open up 32 files. Uh, because, um, insofar as has told me that th opening, trying to open a 33rd file on Linux doesn't work. And I want to see if that's a Linux issue or a, um, for coder application side issue. So here we go. Here's one. Um, two. We can pop this list over here so we can see it. Um, three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Uh, twenty. Oh. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Thirty. Thirty-one. Thirty-two. Yeah. Okay, so this should be. 33, yeah, so it seems like that's um, something wrong with the file exchange system on the Linux side. Linux keyboard, CPP, yeah, this doesn't, this is not hitting any kind of issue. So make sure, insofar as, um, maybe we can talk about this later, but the file exchange system isn't supposed to, a file's not supposed to permanently be resident in the file system, in, in, the, in a file exchange slot. It's just supposed to be in there while it's getting loaded in, and then it's supposed to let the application handle it after that. Um, yeah, okay. So we've done that little test. Um, okay, now we can get to the real plan for today. So this, I have to admit, I'm very excited about. I've been looking forward to this... Um, I've been looking forward to this little experiment for quite some time. I feel like it's going to get dark pretty soon, so I'll just uh, <sighs> I'll just put, turn that on now. Um, yeah. Okay. So um, here's what we're working on, right? So last thing I streamed, I had just finished getting this. Um, working and I started chunking it and um, I didn't finish chunking it on stream so I'll, I'll demo real quick how well the tr chunking system is running. No, not that. Um, where is it? Test. Yes, experiment and I need the new Lexer. Okay. Yes, okay, so now what I want to do is just take a real quick moment to 
um, run experiment. I'm not sure. Well, let me take a look at the experiment code before we waste any time running it to see where I left it. Okay. Do, 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 do. I just want to check. We don't need this open right now. Um, yeah, so we're back to like crazy OBS mode where like 60% of my uh, CPU is being used, like 50% on OBS and um, little bits of percentages here and there by Chrome and whatnot. Um, uh, but that, that'll be fine. We'll just run the test and uh, see what we get. And um, then you can see where we are. So let's see. So I'm set up right now to do not not a single item, repeating a hundred times the chunks between one and sixteen. Um, verbose level negative one. Yeah, I feel like that's a good um, configuration. So I'll just make sure everything's building. Oh, that's right. I have to. Um, I added an error to this so I could check jump to error, work on jump to error stuff in the handmade hero customizations. Um, Really? Hold on a minute. I've got a build error in four coder. That's a bit weird, isn't it? Oh, that should be. This should be up here, I guess. How did I wonder how that happened? Maybe I didn't save before I left. I don't know. I think that's kind of impossible. Maybe I just didn't build before I left. I guess that's probably it. Whew. Okay, well, now that's fixed. We can get back to the fun bit. So we can build the experiment. I want to build it in, in fast mode, though. So we're going to do build exp slash o2. All right, now we can run it. This will take a little bit. So let's just sit back and wait it out. Hey, insofar as thanks for thanks for joining. I'll uh, explain it again real quick, but then we can talk about it at, um, off stream too. But just the idea is the the, the on Windows the um, 32 file slot thing isn't a problem, and the way the file slots are supposed to work is they're like a temporary slot where the file gets loaded into. Once the file is loaded, there's probably there's some code in there um, that you should double check to make sure that you've matched up with what's going on on Windows side, but. Um, it's supposed to check to see if the file slot is no longer in use and then um, open that file slot up for use again so that more files can load in through there. So the point of the file slots is that they are just sort of a temporary spot where things get, like, that manages some data while things are loading in. And then once the stuff is loaded in, they're no longer in use um, so that they can be reused. And it's supposed to, so the only thing the 32 file slots is limits is how many files you can load per frame, not how many files you can have if you've done it correctly. Um, so that's all I'll say about that. It's not going to last forever. It's not the way it's always going to be because it's kind of dumb. But that's the way it is right now. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I can take a look at it too after the stream since I have a few things to do on the Windows one first. But um okay. This just came back. So it takes much less long than that when I'm running on um you know, without OBS taking up tons of time and constantly paging everything out. I'm sure that OBS like is got such like it's got like a half a gigabyte of working memory, so like it's like probably paging out tons of useful stuff all the time and like it's not a half a gigabyte just sitting there. It's constantly changing and so I'm sure it's just got like allocation, deallocation happening all over the place and it's just cycling through all of its virtual addresses, evicting pages all over the place and making a problem for your uh, cache as well. But um, it doesn't run this slow normally for either case, but you can see the ratios are about right. So this normally varies between about like 
uh, 0.95 and 1.05. Um, this is unchunked, so it's about running at the same speed. And that's the hand coded version versus the finite state machine version. The finite state machine version is the one we've written um, basically mostly on stream. Then you can see when it's chunked, it gets it, about um, 0.2, a factor of about 0.2 slower than this one. Um, and that is for chunks of size 1 through 16. So like if I was doing chunks of size 4096, it would be a higher number. But with chunks of size 1, it gets pretty small. And so um, the average speed up there um, is less than a speed up uh, because, you know, the 1s cost you, the 1s slow you down a bit, and the 2s slow you down a little bit, and the 3s slow you down a little bit. They, each one is showing you just a little bit less, but altogether they're all quite a bit slower because it's like it gets only gets to do a few characters at a time rather than just going through and um, not doing that extra work of getting the next little bitty chunk to do the parsing on. But, um, you know, that's still cool because that means we have a thing that runs about the same speed uh, and then has, if you're willing to sacrifice speed, allows for chunks. But I want to do better than that today. So the reason I've set everything up strictly as a finite state machine is just so we can get to this point. And um, now what we can do is hopefully make this much faster than the original. Um, to give credit where credit's due, the original idea for this comes from uh, Sean Barrett. Um, I don't know if he, you know, has actually like done an article about it at this point or not. But at some point, um, he explained the idea to me, or he gave me like a a write up or something about the idea. I can't remember anymore exactly where it came from, but um, got this idea in my head. I've always wanted to try it, so it's what we're going to do today. The only th difference is I don't know how he made his. Um, finite state machine optimization. Like I don't know how he actually made it, but I'm going to make mine by generating it. And the reason I want to do that is because I'm probably going to make a lot of changes to it in the future, and I feel like this scheme won't quite work. Like It won't be very easy to maintain if I don't have a sort of generator for it. If I try to just do it by hand, I think that's going to be too much. So, um, what is this whole big plan? Well, basically, let me t give you a quick reminder, since this is so cool, of how this lecture here works. Um, FSM, blah, blah, blah. Not the white space finite state machine. I've ended up pulling everything out into little miniatures finite state machines so that I can actually optimize all of them in a similar way. Um, let me pull it up again over here. I just want to find, like, where are we doing stuff with the FSM? Uh, int that's the integer FSM. Here's the main FSM. Okay. So, here's this function, main FSM. And another thing that's slowing me down right now is... Um, oh, I actually took out the part that's doing the function calls. So... Um, basically, I have a copy of this code here just so I could get a fair um, speed comparison, but what I ended up doing was pulling these out into function calls, even though they're only getting called in one place. Right, so that's a function call right there. Um, let's see, this is the white space FSM. Do I have white space? Yeah, right there, white space skip FSM is that one. So that should just be um, white space skip FSM, uh, WFSM, C. Okay, so here's the cool thing. Because these are strictly finite state machines, and I've controlled in sort of a functional way, right? These are pretty much functional. Uh, these little finite state machine functions are, like, functional in the term, and, like, they're, like, a pure function in that sense that the inputs are just some data and the output is just always the same given that particular input data. And it's also special in that I've divided it out into a, a thing which is the finite state machine, which is basically a description of some state, which, you know, we have a finite list of what states we can be in, and an input, right? And after each input, we can output a new state, right? And then this will get called again with the new state and a new input from the input stream. So it's literally a finite state machine. So now, the only thing left to do is to speed that part up. And the cool thing you can do is turn this into a lookup table. And the reason this is much faster is um, right now all of this code involves branching, right? So we have lots of um, messing with the pipe. And that's why a lot of my videos I call it like a pipe friendly 
um, lexing is because the idea is in modern processors every mispredicted branch costs you a little bit and every mispredicted not just because it's a possible uh, like misprediction on the branch itself which causes you to flush the pipe and then refill uh, it but it also could be an iCache issue if you have like a really long switch like this one it's not necessarily true that all of that fits into the iCache at once and so that's a problem um, it's hard to say for sure because I haven't actually looked but it's a pretty long function and every time you call into it you're also paying a function pe call penalty which we want to take care of so turn this into a lookup table and um, we can do a lot of stuff to make this faster I think and the lookup table will actually be pretty small so one lookup table should fit in memory fit in a cache line at a time and we'll never even have to have any cache misses on even the memory cache let alone the instruction cache so that it'll be awesome if this can work so to get this little party started what we need to do is um, have like a lexer uh, or I'll call this the FSM table generator all right so here we go um, FSM table generator Turn FSM functions um, or generate FSM tables uh, as dot C files um, from FSM functions. All right, and let me just put the quick little do do. Oops, do do do. Do 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 do. No, do do. There we go. There we go. Awesome. All right. So we're gonna just from the beginning to start writing a program. So we're gonna need a main. Um, bye bye. And um, I'll use some C stamp stuff because it's not a main application this is a generator so I don't really care so we're gonna want standard IO I'm gonna want string I'm gonna want standard lib uh, I think that'll be enough and now what I want to do is I want to take all of these functions here and we're going to start removing them from this code. So we're going to take, um, we're going to do the big one first because that's the fun one. That's the one that's really got to, that, this will be the one that does the most work. This and the white space skipper, I guess. The white space, white space skipper actually does a lot of work. Especially on my code where I don't use tabs, which is a thing to consider. If you're using spaces instead of tabs, that's, you know, depending on how wide you're, how wide you're spacing. That's like four bits of white space to one. Um, uh, so maybe it's an argument for why you should use tabs um, if you're going to stop, if you're going to virtualize white space. Maybe I should s always store things as tabs. That seems like a good argument. Okay, so here's our finite state machine function. And really, the other important thing we're going to need to do is I'm going to need to update the build rule for build e uh, experiment dot bat so that it now builds. Um, and runs the meta generator first. Warning ops. Uh, da, 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 code test. What did I call it? Um, no, not not this one. Go away. This one, please. Um, FSM table generator. Cpp. Um, I'll out that as uh, FSM table generator give it whatever parameters it needs and then um, after that we'll just go ahead and run the FSM table generator real quick forehead uh, build FSM table generator so we just run it alright if it exists and now I can give this a shot alright what happened here so uh, trying to build Let's see, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to build everything every time. Let me update my build rule real quick. Um, uh, 
for now let's just do um, build experiment with um, with ZI there we go okay so invalid argument F at a some table generator what Alright, let's see. Um, <laughs> what was I in the middle of? We've got right here. I'm going to misc real quick because there's something wrong with the build experiment batch file that I don't understand really. That's how I specify output. I've always specified output that way. I'm even doing it that way right here. Okay, we'll just call it um, FSM Gen. How about that? Does that make it better? Is it like the name was too long or something? What is it? What is it talking about? I'm really confused right now. Here, hold on. Let me just hang out in code and then load this up. Okay. This one works. This one doesn't. I'm really confused. I'm not really sure what's going on here. Okay. Um, so something like CL invalid numeric argument. Um, yeah, that one. What are you talking about? Experiment. No, no. Build experiment. Um, um what what's how is this happening? Uh, how is this happening? Code test FSM table generator. Um
Oops. Okay, so let's say I did this. Okay. Let's say I then said I wanted to build something called FSM table generator instead. Technically what I could do is just say I'm going to run gen FSM right there. Okay, so that worked. And then I say I want to do gen FSM. Okay, so I'm guessing FG is also a oh shoot is also a flag, which is dumb because what am I supposed to do to specify my output? CL um, F flag. I'm telling me that F What? Output file set stack size capital F Huh, I see what's going on. Okay, so that's why I ended up calling everything experiment everywhere. It's because I hadn't realized I had screwed this up. Gotcha. Gotcha. Couldn't remember why I ended up calling it experiment everywhere instead of experiment. Now I know. And having learned that, I can get back to why is this thing not building? Um, so, FSM table generator. Boom. Uh, do, do, do. Yes, you want all of that stuff, which is totally fair. You deserve to have it. So now. I feel like I want that struct to be some shared information. So we're gonna make like um, some forward lex or code test for CVP lexer fsms dot h fsms for for C plus plus lexers lexer do do 2303 2016 day day month month year 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 okay and then i can come over here to new h and we can just find all of my structs and enums and start pulling things out. So here's Lex data, Lex FSM. We're gonna need. Well, we don't need Lex data actually. That's not something we need. We need all of the finite state machines. To come over here.
Okay, here's a bunch of lex state for different finite state machines. RCPP shift token starts. Yep, don't need that. Okay, so you pop over here. This is stuff for tables that we'll have to optimize on a different uh, different leg of this journey. Um, yeah, so that's all the types, I think, that I care about for this. Position update rule, don't care about right now. Directive to state. Um, yeah, I don't think I care about that yet. Yes, okay. So all of these types, I'm going to just drop in as a header up at the top. There we go. And now um, over here, we can return to the um, uh, FSM table generator and include up here the same file. Not lex, lexer fsms.h. There you go. And then we want, um, let's see, lex fsm. No, 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 no. I want just all of the mentions of the little little word FSM in case I missed okay here we go the white space tip skipper the int finite state machine goes we'll put this up at the top too actually there main FSM can go out this will totally break this code which is fine and um, let's see, yeah, none of that has to do anything to do with it. Blah, 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 blah. Yes. It's ready to go. All right, so FSM table generator is now building, which is good news. Um, because that means I've now got all of my finite state machine functions in this file. And what we want to do now is we want to start thinking about really what I want to do is like, uh, I don't, hard to say. Well, I'll just ignore it. We'll just, we'll just deal with what I got. So, um, next up I need um, just some basic data types to deal with here. <sighs> Wait, what am I doing load file for? That's not what I want. Um, how, how do I do this? Blah, 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 blah. Right, okay, I see what I'm doing. So, we're going to start with a file, and that's going to be um, something like um, uh, for cpp lexer tables.c, and then um, at some point we're going to open that for writing binary, and then we're going to close that at the end of the day, right? And then, what we want to do is we want to do, um, let's just get a rudimentary uh, sort of template part of this thing up and running right now. So, uh, f printf out to my file. I need um, uh, an array of integers. I'll call it, um, I'll just parameterize that so I can name it later. And there we go. So that's how I'll begin a table. And then I want to give it a name. So the name of my first table will be main um, FSM table. And then uh, I want to f printf on another line a closing bracket and put in some space there. So that's how I can open and end a table. So let's give that a run. Now, did that run the I don't know if that ran the generator is the thing. Lexer fsms.h. I don't know if I see the results of having run that. It might have gotten dumped in build, which isn't obviously what I really want. Um, so let's see. Um, 
somewhere in here there might be a code file yeah so it did create the file but it put it here so that's a problem with my build script um, exp dot bat uh, Let's see, let's see, let's see. So that's running there. What we're really going to do is we're going to pop you there and push you there. And then you, you're going to get pushed somewhere else and popped. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. Better yet. We don't need to pop and re-push. That's the whole point of a stack. So instead of this, we then go code um, test, right? That's where I wanted to output that. So then I'll have to run from there. But now I should be getting, yeah, I got, so here are my tables. Yes, awesome. So um, now what we got to do is we want to drop all those tables right into um, the new Lexer, which I realize is a header file, which is now going to include a C file, but, you know, we'll deal with how to sanitize it later because no one, no one cares about that. LexerTables.c. There we go. So now we can see if there's any reason why it's not building. Can I allocate an array of constant size zero? <laughs> well, just just chill, man. We're gonna make that work. Okay. So now we've got this thing here to begin and end a table. Let me just pull that out because I like to uh, begin table. Uh, file char star table name put a nice little underscore in there and then we can take that drop it right there um, and oh, no 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 that's not what I wanted to do no. begin table and table um, okay cool so that looks like it's still doing the right thing. And now we want to actually do the work of generating this table. So what does this table need to look like? I need to draw a quick picture of it to remind myself, but basically, um, and also to explain it to you guys so you can follow along while we have this little bit of fun here. But basically the way the table is going to work is you have along the top one thing and along the side another thing. And up here we're going to have different um, inputs, right? So these are the 256 chars, um, for now at least. So there's 256 of them, right? And this is our input, right? So that's the size and the type. This is our input um, alphabet, right? So we have 256 across, and then we have over here, we have states. So if you don't mind me writing um, in such a way that it doesn't go vertically, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So over here we have states. So each of the each row in the table will be for one state, and then at each position we will say what state. If I if given this state and this char, where does the finite state machine direct to? What's the next state? So each thing in here, right, is a new state. Now, if we go and visit this real quick, this um, main one here. Well, see, there's really only two things that ever get done. Um, we either set state to something, right? So in a lot of places, we're setting state to something given some input. Or we set this emit token thing, which was sort of a convenience for me so I could write it um, in such a way that I have a variable called emit token. But really, um, I just want to treat it as if um, that's a different set of states. So every set of s every state has a version with the emit token flag on and one with it off for now. So 
to do that, the first thing we need, the outer loop is going to be a loop over all of our states. Um, where did I store that? fsms.h? Yes, okay. So here we go. We're going to go from int i equals 0, i is less than ls count plus plus i. And what I'll actually do is rename i there, i into state. And if I check the um, lex fsm real quick, state is an unsigned char, so I'll just make that match. And then um, in here, we'll do a loop over all of the possible chars. Now, I'm going to use unsigned chars here so that we don't get like negative confusion. And um, well, it's a bit it's a bit of an annoying situation. So we'll do an unsigned short um, with that being C, and that's less than or equal. Well, we'll just do less than 256 plus plus C. So the problem that I'm worried about there that I'm trying to avoid is if you just do an unsigned char and you do less than 256, it will never end. The loop will never end, right? So you need to make sure that you can actually plus plus pass the end of where you need. Dad. Thank you, Miblo, for pointing out that I had accidentally reloaded the file. Not sure how it got out of sync that time. I don't think I saved it in... Yeah, I don't even have Visual Studio open, so I'm not sure how that got out of sync. This thing was seeming pretty solid for a little while there. You can see I'm running... I'm actually running um, um, an updated version of 4Coder where that's supposed to be fixed, and it's still not fixed. So I was going to release it because I thought that was fixed, but now it looks like it's not fixed. So... I'm going to go ahead and assume that I need to keep working on it um, until I get that properly fixed. I don't like it at all. Okay, so um, um, don't need any of that. We'll get to what we're going to do with this. Blah, blah, blah. Emit token, multi-line, completed. state okay so now what we need to do is while we're going through this loop we're going to have some sort of finite state machine we're going to start by clearing that machine to zero all right and then each step here we're going to set the state of the machi machine to state we're going to set the um, let's see what else do I need so there's that state don't need anything to do with int state right now. I'm not using int state for this one. Emit token. We'll set the emit token to zero every time. Um, Multi-line. Is that also output from the um, multi-line? Ah! Okay, so we also need to know um, that could possibly be a separate table. Yeah, that'll be a separate table. So we'll admit, we'll ignore multi-line. Let me come up here and do some things here. So to do Allen multi-line table. Um, what is completed doing? I feel like that's like a vestigial limb right there, that m completed variable. Doesn't really do anything, I don't think. Um, yeah, okay, so we don't need that. Um, and... Um, Okay. So then what we can do is that at each step we'll get a new FSM out of this. So then we'll do main FSM, which is the function. I input the the state that I care about and the input. 
and then I get an output at the finite state machine right there. And um, basically, what that contains is the information about. Um, uh, let's see. I think for now, what I'll do is I'll just have that contain which state it should be, right? So what I'll do is just say, let's get warmed up. Let's do um, do table item file, and then what I'll do is I'll take um, uh, the state and just plop it right there, and then we have do table item, and these should probably not be ints. I want them to be smaller. I want them to be unsigned chars. File, file, unsigned char state. No, I'll just call that item because these could be anything. And then I'll f printf. Um, ah, there we go. File, um, and then a number, so I guess that would be percent %d, comma, and then um, I'll just cast int this item here. So that didn't work quite right. What's wrong? Does not take two arguments. Main FSM, what else do you care about? Oh, you want to know which PP state we're in. Right, right. Well, um, isn't that a part of the... Wait, why would I need to pass that in? Isn't that a part of the finite state machine? <sighs> oh, it's not. Okay, that's fine. I'll just say for now, let's call this um, LSPP default. Oh, wrong spot. Chart. Five. Um, what are you talking about? You're saying up here that the input is um, like a char C. That should probably be an unsigned char C anyway. So let's just redo that. Um, five. Eleven. Now what are you talking about? Conversion from unsigned short. Oh, because C's a short. Gotcha. There we go. So now we've, in theory, just generated this whole table. Uh, because we've looped over a bunch of states and then we looped over a bunch of C's. So let's take a look at what our table looks like now. Yes, there we go. We got a table. It's quite fascinating, really. I mean, most things just lead to the same state they were in originally, I would think, but they're actually coming out as zeros. That can't be right. Okay, no, because those were all in state zero. Gotcha. So there's 256 transitions per state. Yes, definitely. Interesting. So now I think I'm going to just add in a quick thing. Um, void um, end row file um, this will just um, print out a new line so that I can make this a uh, little pretty so that my editor can handle it and all that good stuff. I mean, not that it can't handle it right now, it's just um, will be prettier when it does handle it. Tables.c reload. There we go. So there we go. That's 36 different states. And most of the time, it looks like, wow, so two transitions to three in a lot of cases. That's interesting. I wonder what case two is. Now I'm really curious about these kinds of things. So let's see. Um, um, 
fsms.h. What is state 2? There's ls default 1, 2, so pound pound transitions to 3, which is preprocessor, right? And then pp, that's cool. Yep, that's awesome. So that looks like it's doing the right thing, roughly speaking. Um, and uh, let's see. So next thing we need to do is we need to um, we need to deal with the fact that in this table we have 256 possible inputs, but as it turns out, a lot of those inputs um, could be treated as an equivalent class, right? For instance, if we look down this first column, all inputs of uh, zero and all inputs of one have the same behavior except right there. Okay, so I take that back. Those two have a difference right there, right? This transitions you to an 18, that transitions you to a 17. That's interesting. But the one positions one and two definitely have that rule, right? There's two columns there that are identical. We want to eliminate identical columns is the next goal. So that means that we're not actually going to do any of this stuff we just did. Um, this was all printing the table out. And what's actually going to happen is we're going to first, um, before we print the table out, we're going to have something similar to all of this, but it's going to look more like, um, uh, what if instead of this we did um, a malloc to get something of this size, right? So I need like an unsigned char array of, um, uh, you know, a table, and that will be... Um, Let's see, ls count times 256. So this will be full s transition table, right? And then um, um, Then what I want to do is I want to say, as we're going across doing all this work, um, let's see, we're going to do something, basically a copy of this code here. Um, but instead of printing out, what this is going to do is um, we're going to take full transition table i++ plus plus equals and put in the new FSM state right there. right? So here's uh, where we set i equal to 0 to begin with, right? And then down here, instead of actually doing the finite state machine, we'll just transition to um, setting like o at the beginning, i equals 0. And every time we want to do a table item, we'll just pull it out of the transition table, right? So that should be equivalent still. Uh, but not ready to make a change yet. Okay. So now when I go to tables.c, yeah, same thing still. So nothing has changed. The only thing that's changed now is instead of printing all that out, I'm holding on to it in an array. So now why am I holding on to it in an array? That's where it gets really cool. So we can do all sorts of um, number crunching on these arrays now. Now what I basically want to do is I want to take columns of this thing, right? So I've printed it out in the order of rows, but I want to read out of it in columns and compare one column at a time. So that means that I've laid the data out in the wrong way. Because what I want to know is I want to know if column 0 equals column 1. right? I want to know if column 1 equals column 2 and so on. Um, and I'm basically going to end up trying to figure out how to put them all into equivalence classes um, you doing c c column wise comparison. So I want each column wise comparison to be snappy and that means I need to reorganize the data so that it's not laid out row first but column first. Um, and then I need a way to, once I've got that column first data, print it out in the right order here. So to do it 
in column first order would simply be to say that this comes first. That makes the data printing column first. But now the problem is every time I'm reading, I'm reading in the wrong way. So what I actually want to do is say, look, um, I'm iterating on a, uh, yeah, so like right here what I would do is I could introduce like, um, we'll get rid of the I, we'll say, look, unsigned char, um, uh, what is it exactly a pointer to? Is it a pointer to, I can, at each state, each state is currently a row, so each state is going to be a column. And so I'll set column equal to um, full transition table. And then after each row, I'll do column plus equals ls count, basically, right? Because that's the size of one um, column, right? Oh, wait, wait, no, 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 no. How large are the columns? Right now, okay, those, those aren't the right columns. I think I'm confusing myself. So if I'm iterating across states, I'm going to visit one state. That state will consume an entire column. The size of a column will be 256. Because so an entire one full state has 256, um, 256 items in it. Cool. Okay, so now um, I have a column. Uh, I have which column I want to be on, right? Is this right? I'm trying to make sure I'm thinking about this right, the right way. This can't quite be right. Because that 256 can't be right. What am I thinking about incorrectly? What I basically have to do is skip while I'm printing things out. I have to go, look, full transition table had um, a position here, and then skip to the next, like, ls count over here, 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 and here. Um, Okay, so we have, let me pull up a picture. Um, we have states along the top now. And we have inputs along the side. Right, because we're flipping the whole order of generation for this. So that we have each state in column, well, the reason we did that was so because rows are faster, right? So we wanted those to be um, the things we could compare easily as each input uh, class to see if two input classes are actually equivalent, right? So we have them in rows like this. But when we print, what we want to do is we want to say, here's the state I'm on. So I'm going to start here and then, yeah, okay, I see, I see. So it is plus 256 because that would take me to the next column over. And then whichever column I'm on, I want to do that column um, um, plus something like um, i times ls count. And then we'll set i equals 0 right here and do I guess I could just do times C, really, right? Whoops, because which C I want also answers that question. If I'm here, C0, C1, C2, and so I'm just, okay, yep, 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 yep. Okay, that's a little confusing. I don't think I've ever tried to read out of a table in the wrong order. So let's see if that gets me where I want to be. 527, it should still just do the same thing. Um, right, so I'm still actually dereferencing here. Tables. Okay, so that still looks like it's the same thing. So that's good. And that means now, um, ooh, where are we getting these numbers, though? There's no state that large. Uh, do table item. 
Am I overflowing and getting garbage data? Yeah, so that's an easier way. That's a good suggestion. We'll do it that way. Do, 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 do. Full transition table. Thank you to um, uh, Anza. Good point. This is simpler. So, um, it's C times LS count plus state. I think column should have just been plus one. Anyways, we'll find out now. Tables dot C. Okay, yeah, that's correct. That's what it should be. Thirty-six always transitions to thirty-six, right? So we don't technically need to store that. We'll have to optimize that out too, but we'll deal with that later. Um, does thirty-five always transition to thirty-five? can't be true, right? I wonder what those even are, if that's true. I guess some of them probably emit and some of them don't, right? It's like once it's in 35, it stays in 35, and the question becomes whether it emits or not, which we're eventually going to bake into the state, and then these won't all be equivalent. Yeah, that's what's happening here. Okay. So never mind any of that. Um, so this is working again. Um, so now, each um, in the data, right? We have each of these columns is one row of our table, right? So we've got we've got this like transposed from the the way the matrix is actually set up in the data. And the reason for that is that I can just do sort of mem compare between two rows and see if they're equivalent. So the reason I want to be able to do that is I want to build up equivalence classes, and um, that's going to be kind of interesting. So first I need to establish um, if I can even understand how to do this. So I'm going to start with, for instance, um, uh, unsigned char state equals zero state is less than ls count plus plus the state right so now I'm going to start from the state and go across all the states and for each state what I want to do is I want to um, do another loop that starts at the next state after it so s2 I'll call this just state 2 equals state plus 1 while state 2 is less than ls char plus plus state 2. And I want to do, and this isn't the most efficient way I could do it, because I could totally use like um, a transient property to get a lot more done. Um, but I'm not, this is just a generator. It doesn't need to be as optimal as possible. So I'm just basically going to compare every pair and make a, a graph of all of the things that are equivalent to each other. And if I don't have any bugs, that, that graph will um, represent equivalence classes between these different states, or between the different inputs. Wait. Okay, except one change. These aren't states to begin with. These are um, C's. Okay. So then what I can do is I can use that C um, and I can do sort of quick like cache align here, um, C line equals um, full transition table plus um, C times LS count. And then in here I'll have, um, whoops, C2 line equals um, that plus one. And then after each of these steps here, I'll do C2 line plus equals LS count to skip it. Um, 
and you know if I wanted to make those perfectly symmetrical I'd put C line right there with C equals to zero to begin with and after each step I would skip it right here there we go okay so now I have C line and C2 line and I want to see if they are equal so basically if a mem compare and I need to double check that. So let's see here. Do, do, do. Mem compare, right? Int return value. Function returns an integer less than, equal to, or greater than zero. All right. So we're hoping that these two things are equal, like that the, the return should be equal to zero if I have um, equal lines here. So there's C line, there's C2 line. The length of these is just the size of, wait no, it's just how, how large are these? Each of these is um, uh, got ls count bytes in it. And if that equals zero, and I don't actually have a graph data structure set up yet, so let's do this real quick. Um, basically all I care about are um, is uh, well, how, how can I do? What's the what's the best way? We could do a matrix, or we could do a list of of edges. So I need to think about that real quick. Um, how am I going to use it? If I have like, for instance, I'll get position zero, and then I go okay. Okay, what would list of edges give me? The list of edges I could say, hey, these two guys are linked. And then I could say, um, you know, look up all the spots where this guy links to somebody else. Okay, I'll do list of edges. I just thought of something. So, um, whoops. There we go. Um, so we need. UV, and we will make a list of edges real quick. So, edges, malloc, size of edge, um, and the most edges we could possibly have is if all of them were equivalent, we would end up with somewhere around 256 squared edges. How big is that? That's not crazy big, right? That's like 565, 36, or something like 65536, right? Yeah. 65536. It's not the worst number in the world. I feel like we can't actually have that. At most, we can have half that because I'm only doing a triangle, not actually a full square. And I'm going to sort all my edges so that I have the left one being lesser than the right one. Plus, we don't have the down the diagonal. So you could even maybe do less than half, but I'm going to just go with half because that's less math than who cares. 32768. Alright. There we go. So that should be enough edges. And then I'm going to need like um, int edge count, which is going to start at zero. And then I'm just going to every time I find an equivalent pa pair, I'm going to do edges edge count equals. Um, uh, how do I want to do that? Edge count dot u equals c edges edge count dot v equals c2 plus plus edge count. All right. Um, let's see. Um, so that hopefully is at least building. No, 534. What's wrong with 534? Edges, edge count conversion from unsigned oh sorry about that sorry about that I promise you we're not going to lose any information okay There might be an easier way to do this. 